Have you ever held a secret before? Well, I certainly have. For a long time, I carried a heavy secret. It felt as though I carried 500 pounds on my shoulders. But my life was full of adventure, especially when it came to dating. I met this guy online, French guy. His name was Jérémy. And all what Jérémy could see was picture perfect. A girl who looked confident, who seemed decently put together, and who looked like she knew exactly where she was going. But what Jérémy didn't know is the secret that I held. You see, I'd been silently and slowly losing my eyesight, and I didn't want to tell anyone. So, I had the idea to go on that date pretending to be a fully sighted person. That required meticulous preparation. So I picked a restaurant that I knew exactly I was very familiar with it, and I knew exactly what it looked like. Had a lot of lighting, no stairs. I got there early, I picked a spot, and I calculated my distance between where I was sitting, the washroom, and the exit. And then I FaceTimed my confidant, one of the very few people who knew. I called her on FaceTime, and I said, hey, can you help me pick something on this menu before he gets here? He's going to get here in any minute. And she did. The first part of the evening and the date was quite rocky. As soon as he got in and said hi, I attempted to make eye contact with him. But apparently, I was staring at the wall behind him because he turned around and he said, what are you looking at? And that's when I said, well, uh, that's a really nice wall. It's nice in here, don't you think? And then he said, uh, well, it's uh, a plain white wall, Mariam. <laughs> All right, it's OK. He's going to forget about it. So we sit down. It's time to take the order. So I take the menu and pretend to be reading it for the first time. And as I'm confidently going through it, I say to the waiter, I'm going to take this, please. And then I feel this awkward smile and this silence. And he reaches out, turns the menu around, and says, you mean this? Is this what you want? We continue. And as we're talking, the awkward smile comes back, and I think, oh, no, what did I do now? And then he sort of reaches out and, and tries to stop me and says, wait, wait. And then I kind of I look down, and I realize I just twirled my entire hair extensions around my fork. <laughs> now was the time to move to the bar area which ruined my whole calculations because I actually needed to go to the washroom. So I slowly make my way. I see the first door, and I just stop there, and I get real close, and I'm trying to figure out, is this picture a man or a woman? Like, this is a very artistically drawn picture. And then I'm just waiting there a couple of seconds, and then my luck had it. This lady just came out of the washroom. Perfect. Thank goodness. And so I leave the washroom. I go sit by the bar. I look to my right at Jeremy and I say, hey, what's up? And then I realize, oh, something looks kind of different. I didn't realize he was wearing a hat this whole time. And, and he has a mustache? Why does he look so confused? <laughs> then I look around. Oh, 
Jeremy was actually standing behind me, leaning on the pool table with his arms crossed, looking at me while I had just struck a conversation with the wrong guy. And all I had to say was, oh, I didn't even know you were there. So that was the end of the night. The next day, I get a text message. It wrote, hey, so when are we hanging out again? Apparently, Jeremy was into weirdos. <laughs> okay. Well, this time, I was invited for dinner at his place. He came to pick me up, and on the way there, I crossed my fingers and hoped he had no stairs at his place. As soon as we got there, he opens the door, and there it was. The stairway of hell. It was a long staircase with over 20 steps, and it even curved on its way up and had nothing to hold on to. Oh, man, how am I going to get away with this now? I just kind of sneak behind him. It's, it's your house. Go ahead, go ahead. I follow him, and I imitate his every step. He puts one leg up. I put one leg up. Left foot up, I put the left foot up too. He stops, I stop. <laughs> and I finally make it up the stairs. Later, we're watching TV and Jeremy falls asleep. I start to think, what am I doing still hanging out with a guy who doesn't even know the real me? Exactly. I decided I had to leave while he was still asleep. <laughs> now, I reached my phone and I called the same confidant. Hey, listen, I have no idea where I am, but you really have to come pick me up. Sent her my location. And then I looked around. There's a window. Oh, I know he's on the second floor. I can't jump out. I'm going to break a leg or something. I guess I'm going to have to go out and face the stairs. So I opened the door of the room, only to find myself in a pitch black apartment. And before I lose my footing, I went, I rushed back in and thought of another plan. No, this is not going to work now. Oh, I'm going to download the flashlight app. So I do that, I'm determined, I go back out, and now I can sort of, you know, make up a little bit of what's around me. And I start tippy-toeing my way in the hallway, sort of hunched forward. I felt like a burglar. I was bumping left and right into the walls and feeling all kinds of foreign objects along the way, including a pair of feet that belonged to one of his roommates. I didn't even know someone was there. And then I finally make it. The staircase of hell came face to face with it. But before, I needed to retrieve my boots. They were placed on a tall rack somewhere with 50-something other pairs. I thought, do I really need my boots? Should I just take any that I see? And then I started feeling one by one until I felt my furry boots, put them on, took one step forward and one step down, and I thought, this is going to be a long night. Now, I had to find an efficient and effective way to go down these stairs without falling and causing a scene, and as rolling down was not, not an option at this point, I thought, oh, I'm going to sit down and go down one step at a time on my butt. But I have to do this quickly because the last thing I wanted was for Jeremy to wake up, turn the lights on, see me sitting in the middle of his staircase in the middle of the night. So I start the countdown, 20, 19, 18, and I have no idea where I'm going. I just have one leg extended and eventually, 
my foot touches the base of the door and I see the shiny door handle. I reach out, I open the door, and a beam of light hit my face. I felt like, I swear I could have heard the angels from the sky. <sighs> and my friend was on the other side. Maryam, I'm right here. Shh, come help me down the stairs. For a long time, I carried a heavy secret. It felt as though I carried 500 pounds on my shoulders. Today, I carry a cane, and it only weighs half a pound. But the best part is now I know where I'm going. You see, when you let go of your secret, you lighten your burden, and you find your way. Thank you.